Playing Doom makes you smarter, and science can prove it. Guys, this isn't clickbait. This isn't an edgy opinion. It's reality. Truth with proof. Backed by over a decade of cognitive research into how fast-paced shooters affect the brain. Because while Doom might look like pure chaos, just demons, metal, and gore flying across the screen, what it's actually doing is training your mind. Every time you rip and tear through hell, your brain is getting sharper. You're making split-second decisions, managing resources under intense pressure, tracking visual havoc, and staying three steps ahead for the most part. Now, while this could be viewed as just mindless violence, fact of the matter is, is that it's also mental performance. So today we're going to be breaking down why Doom is a full-blown cognitive workout. Also, I won't be talking about how you can get a cathartic release by playing Doom. I feel like many of you probably already know that. I've seen a few videos on this already. My aim is that by the end, you'll understand exactly how mowing down demons in half might be the best thing that you've done for your brain all week. Whether it's in the Dark Ages, Eternal, 2016, or the OGs, I know that many people weren't too happy with the Dark Ages, but that isn't the point of this video. Personally, as a casual, I thought the Dark Ages was fun, but definitely easier than Eternal, and on the hardest difficulty even. If you like walking around like a heavy tank, creating enough carnage to make the Prince of Hell look like the victim, put a shotgun to that like button. But if you don't like the video, smash your shield into the dislike button anyways, because all engagement is engagement, and welcome to Doom. The Dark Ages. I ran a poll to see what a lot of you guys thought about who would win in a fight between Master Chief, Titus, and Doom Guy or Doom Slayer. Here are the results. But what do you guys think? This is a fight with no prep, no weapons, just straight hands, fist fight to the death. Doom Slayer is such a monstrosity that sometimes you forget that you're supposed to be the good guy with the way that you slaughter your way through hell. I mean, he cuts a swath through them. He looks like the bad guy, too angry to die. This guy is such a threat. The Prince of Hell knew that he couldn't rule as long as he was around. The demons saw him and they ran the other way. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Doom Slayer is just crazy. Playing Doom feels like being dropped into a steel gauntlet filled with fire and bone. It's medieval mayhem on turbo. Every fight, a blood-soaked chess match where one wrong move gets you shredded. Unless you're playing on the easier difficulties, then you might actually think it's boring. That's because it is. But regardless, from the outside, it looks insane. Inside, though, it's a different story. That mess is something much more precise. Because even with the incredible armor, the Captain America shield, and the primal brutality, Dark Ages still runs on the same foundation that made Eternal, the only other Doom game that I've played, a cognitive pressure cooker. Whether you like the Dark Ages or not, personally, again, I enjoyed it for what it was. Although, I will say the asking price of 80 buckaroos was a bit high for what I got. What you may or may not know is that science has been studying games like this for years fast-paced shooters that force your brain into overdrive. And the results are clear. They actually improve how your mind works. So researchers have found that these kinds of games don't just keep you entertained, they make you big-brained. Players who regularly engage with high-speed action games tend to show measurable gains in four key areas. Visual attention, cognitive flexibility, working memory, and decision-making speed. In other words, you process information faster, adapt quicker, and stay locked the F in longer. Daphne Bevelier and C. Sean Green, two of the most well-known cognitive scientists in this field, found that gamers were significantly better at tracking multiple targets and scanning chaotic environments without getting overwhelmed. Another study by Cozado showed that FPS players were quicker at shifting tasks and handling new information, and research by Dai revealed that action gamers make decisions up to 25% faster than the average person, without sacrificing accuracy. So when we're talking about Doom making you smarter, this is where it begins. The Dark Ages don't hold your hand. It throws you into this meat grinder and conditions your brain to solve it. 
You are strengthening synaptic connections, literally building and reinforcing neural pathways, just like your brain does when you learn a new language or develop a new skill. However, your brain in all of its glory won't just stop at performance. No, the human brain naturally craves more. These effects show up physically in your brain. In a 2014 study led by neuroscientist Simone Kuhn, researchers found that people who played action-heavy games showed increased gray matter volume in areas of the brain responsible for decision-making, spatial awareness, and motor coordination. So you might be wondering, what is gray matter? Why does it matter? And what does that actually mean for us? Well, gray matter is one of the aliens from Ben 10. I'm kidding. Gray matter is the part of your brain packed with neurons, the cells that process information. The denser that your gray matter is, the more neural connections that your brain is forming and reinforcing. It's like laying down better circuitry for faster thinking, remembering more, and reacting with precision. More gray matter means more brain power where it counts. And in Doom, that matters. Every time you steamroll through a area, dodging projectiles, switching weapons, timing glory kills, you're training your brain to operate at peak speed. We're talking about visible, measurable changes to your brain structure, fueled by blood, steel, and 200 beats per minute. But those structural changes in your brain don't stay locked inside of the game. And what do I mean by that? The thing is, we usually think of split-second decision-making as something you're either born with or not. Some people act in high-stress moments. Others freeze, become a deer in the headlights. That moment under extreme pressure where instinct takes over and hesitation means failure might feel like innate raw reflexes, but the data shows that this isn't just something that you're born with. It is trainable. Doom or games like Doom, Marvel Rivals is another game that comes to mind, strengthens the same brain regions responsible for executive control, your reflexive decision-making and panic suppression in real-world scenarios. The next time something goes wrong and you move without hesitation while somebody else locks up, think about that. That might not be instinct. That could be your hours in Doom, rewiring your brain to thrive under pressure. Now, I believe most of you guys are adults and you can think for yourself, so I don't think I need to say this, but obviously this isn't advice on how to train your brain or, or what to do when it comes to trying to improve your mental performance. I'm just showing you guys the data. I'm not saying to do one thing over the other or ignore the fact that you also play chess or something like that. You know what I mean? I don't, again, I don't think I need to say it, but sometimes <laughs> there's always one guy. If you've played Doom, again, I mainly mean at the higher difficulty levels, then you already know it's not just about speed or reflexes, it is about decisions. You're thrown into a layered battleground where survival depends on how quickly you can process exactly what's happening and choosing what to do next. One moment you're dodging fodder, the next you're cornered by something 17 feet tall that's trying to eviscerate you. You don't always get to pause and plan, you decide and prioritize who do you kill first how do you best kill them? What do you use? Where to move? And then you act. And that happens in a very almost instantaneous moment. Every decision carries weight. Whether you know it or not, your brain is running hot. I think I might even go so far as to say that even if you're playing on the lower difficulty, Doom still can teach you how to think faster and think better, especially if you're new to this style of gaming. Again, I don't normally play this kind of game, but I enjoy it every now and then. The thing is, it eases you into the pressure, and then it cranks it up until your brain either adapts or breaks. However, if you play on the higher difficulties, which again I recommend, ultraviolence, nightmare, the mental strain gets extreme. Bump up the in-game speed to 150%, and it is even more fun and challenging. I fought the final boss, the Prince of Hell, like this, and I loved it, despite dying 20 times. I love the parrying, by the way, in this game. Maybe it's just the souls in me, but I, I really enjoyed the pairing aspect. It's pure cognitive strain, and it demands your full attention. And that is where the benefits go even deeper, because the higher the demand, the more intensely your brain is engaged. The greater the cognitive load, the stronger the adaptive response. And over time, 
what used to feel like chaos becomes clarity. Not because the game gets easier, but because you got better, your brain got better, your mind, your brain got used to operating at that high level. And it became the new baseline, it becomes your new norm. And this is what cognitive scientists call high cognitive load. When your mind is juggling multiple demands at once under time pressure with no margin for error. Doom lives, thrives in that space. Psychologists call this automaticity, the process where repeated high pressure decision making becomes hardwired into instinct. You're no longer analyzing, you recognize, you act instinctually almost. For example, this is how athletes make game-winning moves without thinking, or how firefighters enter a burning building. Not the best example, but just something that came to mind. But they enter this building and they know exactly where to go and what to do. It's a brain trained through stress and repetition. It's the equivalent of working out your muscles, where over time they get bigger because your body has learned, hey, we need this muscle to get harder, better, faster, stronger, so let's adapt. Let's get bigger. Studies on action gamers have found that FPS players tend to outperform others in tasks requiring things like fine motor control, visual motor tracking, and reaction time under pressure. In some research, even surgical trainees who played high-speed shooters made fewer mistakes and responded faster during complex procedures. Why is that? Because their brains had already learned how to translate chaos into clean, deliberate action. They're taking what they know and they apply it somewhere else. Again, it's like learning another language. If you already know French, learning Italian is likely going to be easier than if you try to learn Italian without knowing another language. We could go on about examples. The human brain is just so complex and so powerful. The human mind is just absolutely astronomically phenomenal. The things that we're capable of doing. That's why we're the top. That's why we're the apex predators of this planet. Good or bad, we're here for a reason. But what about your mom? Is she telling you that you're playing the devil's game? What about your wife? Is she telling you that you're spending too much time shooting your load all over the demons of hell? I love my wife. Show them this video and tell them that you're doing it for science. It's empirical. But are you also aware of the subtle psychological tricks that Marvel Rivals implements to keep you playing their game? Click the video on the screen and let me know.